All right, all right. We have things to do tonight. So we're going to explore some ways that I've discovered that help us learn to love ourselves. Anybody who studied the Course in Miracles knows that they say, forgive and love thyself. You know, it's love thy neighbor as thyself. And the thing most people seem to forget, it's as thyself. It isn't just love thy neighbor. And you can't really love your neighbor until you do learn to love yourself. And I'm not sure exactly why we've gotten away from loving who we are. And remember, when I talk about loving yourself, I'm not talking about vanity or arrogance. That is not love. That is fear. I'm talking about just really respecting and cherishing the incredible miracle that you are. Because each one of us is someone really fabulous. We're divine, magnificent expressions of life. Only we have to know it. And when we do, it's like we're in tune with the entire universe and everything just flows in our life. So we need to not only love our neighbor, but we need to love ourselves, and we need to begin there. And it's interesting, we resist this so much. So tonight I want to share with you some of my ideas about life and how you can get to the point where you really do love yourself. When we sort of get the guidelines on how we love ourselves and we're willing to practice them consistently, it's amazing the changes we can make in our lives. You know, I'm a very simple lady and I have very simple guidelines for life. And for some people, they're far too simplistic. They think that's just ridiculous. But over and over again, I've seen people try them and practice them, and it's amazing how they work. Now, I want you to remember that if you hear just one sentence tonight that you can use to help improve the quality of your life, that's fabulous. You don't have to get everything I say. You don't have to accept everything I say. You don't even have to understand it. Whatever you're hearing tonight is going into your subconscious mind, and you will use it at the appropriate time, or you'll reject it. You know, you're always in control. You can do whatever you want. I can stand here for days and tell you all sorts of wonderful ideas, but if you don't want to accept them, that's your business. We're always in control. So let's see what we can do. All right, and let's have a good time tonight improving the quality of our lives. Sometimes we think it's so serious when we work on ourselves. And we can do it that way, and we can also do it through a lot of pain, but we can uh, do it through a lot of joy too, okay? So if you want to love yourself, then I suggest you start with these 10 steps that I've put together. Absolutely number one, first of all, most important, and if you really get this one, you don't have to practice any of the others because they'll come automatically. The number one thing is to stop all criticism. Stop criticizing yourself now and forevermore. Never again. Make a vow to yourself, I'm not going to do this anymore. You have been criticizing yourself for years and years, and you're still criticizing yourself for the same stuff you were criticizing yourself for before. So let's, it seems that it doesn't work. So why don't we try another tactic? Let's come from a place of being okay as you are, and you can make changes. I remember what a revelation it was to me when I discovered that I could make changes in my life without being a bad person. I didn't have to be bad and then change. I could be okay and just change. Criticism never changes a thing. So refuse to criticize yourself and accept yourself exactly as you are. Remember, everybody changes, everybody. But when you criticize yourself, your changes automatically become negative. You get into negative changes. And when you approve of yourself, it's amazing how your changes are positive. Our ability to change and adapt and flow with the process of life is our healing power. That's our healing power. 
We are powerful beings, and our power lies in the choice of thoughts that we think and the words that we use. Because our thoughts are creative. They create our experiences. They contribute to everything we do in life. So you do choose the thoughts you think. You really do. Sometimes we think, oh, they zip by so quickly. But you really do choose them. So choose thoughts that are nurturing to you. Choose thoughts that are uplifting, that are supporting of you. If you really want to love yourself, it's essential that you stop criticizing yourself now and forevermore. Absolutely. And you can, you can do it. You can do it. Just make a vow that that's what you'd like to do. All right, number two, don't scare yourself. Please, if you love yourself, don't scare yourself. Stop terrorizing yourself with frightful thoughts. Because all you do is make it any situation worse. You don't make it better. And don't take a small situation and make it into a big monster. And don't take a scary situation and make it even worse. Be there for yourself, you know? It's a terrible way to live. And if you have a habit of doing this, I suggest you stop it. You just stop it. You know, how often do we lie in bed at night going over and over a problem, creating the worst possible scenario? We do this for illness, we get a pain, and we're immediately planning our funeral. Uh-huh, I've done so, a few people I think here have done that, yes. <laughs> We do this for relationships. Someone doesn't call, and we immediately decide that we're totally unlovable and we'll never have a relationship in our life. And we're abandoned. We do this for work. You know, you hear a small remark at work, and you think, oh my god, I'm going to be fired. You know, we build these things up. These, and remember, these frightening thoughts are affirmations. Only they're negative affirmations. So if you have a habit of thinking negative thoughts that scare you, what I find is the best thing to do is find an image of something you really like, something that you love. It could be a sport, it could be a sunset, it could be some beautiful view, it could be flowers, it could be anything. And use that as a substitute. Pick that as your image, like your switch to image. And every time the negative thought comes up, or every time you find that you're frightening yourself, just switch to this thought or this image. You know, and say to yourself, no, I'm not going to think about that anymore. I'm going to think about sunsets or waterfalls or beautiful yachts or whatever your, your image is. Whatever you want to choose. And if you automat if you keep doing that, you will break that habit. But it takes practice. It always takes a little practice. Love yourself enough to stop scaring yourself, you know, just stop that. Number three is be gentle and kind and patient with yourself. Just be gentle and kind and patient. You know, a good example of the power of patience is a garden. A garden is often to begin with just a patch of dirt and then you add some seeds or some little plants and you let the sun shine and you water it and you give it some loving attention. And to begin with, it seems like not much is happening. But if you continue doing that, if you're patient, things will change. The garden will grow and blossom. And if you think of your life as like a garden, or your mind like a garden, you know, what kind of garden what you, would you like? What kind of events do you want to have happen in your life? And what kind of seeds do you need to plant in order for those to happen. So you select the seeds, you select the thoughts that will contribute to creating the garden of experiences that you want. And I like to think of planting these thoughts in the fertile soil of your subconscious mind where they get nurtured and then can grow. And if you pay attention to them, if you take care of them, then one of these days you'll reap a wonderful, bountiful and beautiful harvest of all the things you want. You're learning new ways of thinking. Now, I realize that some of you have been working on yourself for a very long time. So some of the things I'm going to say tonight might just reinforce for you what you already know. And a few of you may be just beginning on your pathway of self-discovery. And some of the things I may say tonight might sound ridiculous. 
or you may resist them a lot. But remember, the resistance is part of the process of making the changes. When you ask the question, how do I love myself, you are already in process of beginning to learn to love yourself. Because there was a, probably a time when you wouldn't even dream of asking the question. So you're already started there. So as you learn these new ways of thinking, be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself and be patient with yourself as you plant the new thoughts in your mind. Now watch for the weeds. The weeds are like the old negative thoughts. And pluck them out as quickly as you can. Remove those negative thoughts as soon as you see them. You want to treat yourself as you would somebody that you really, really liked. Or as you would a, treat a gentle little child. You know, for yourself, that's important. And you know, it's OK to make mistakes while you're learning. You don't have to immediately be perfect. So many of us are cursed with perfectionism. And we won't give ourselves a chance to really learn anything new, because if we don't do it perfectly in the first three minutes, we again assume we're not good enough. But anything you're going to learn is going to take time. And when you first begin doing something new, it never feels right. You know, just for a moment, do this. I want you to clasp your hands. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but just clasp your hands. And I'd like you to notice which thumb is on top. OK? Unclasp your hands and reclasp them with the other thumb on top. How does that feel? <laughs> feels strange. It feels odd. It feels different. It may even feel wrong. OK? All right, now clasp, unclasp, and put them the first way, and open them and put them the second way, and the first way, and the second way, and the first way, and the second way, and hold it. Now how does it feel? Not so bad. Not so wrong. We're getting a little used to it. Maybe we could even learn to do it both ways. Well, you know, it's the same thing with anything you learn. The first time you try it, it feels wrong. It feels strange. It feels different. And we immediately have a tendency to judge it. But if we just practice a little bit, it can, can become normal and natural. So when you're beginning to do your affirmations or change your way of thinking, just know all you need is a little bit of practice. A little bit of practice, that's all. You're not going to do everything in one day. You're not going to love yourself totally in one day. But if you can love yourself just this much more every day than you did before, like a quarter of an inch, and every day you do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, do you realize in two or three months you could love yourself this much? And all you did was this much every day, just a tiny dip bit. It's amazing. It takes just a little bit more love every day. You know, you can get up in the morning and say, I really want to love you more today than I did yesterday. And if you make that statement, the universe will hear you and find out ways to do that. OK, number four, be kind to your mind. Be kind to your mind. You know, self-hatred is really only hating thoughts you have about yourself. That's it, all it is. And you don't want to hate yourself for having thoughts. You gently want to change those thoughts, change your thinking. You know, you are worth loving. All of us are. We do not have to earn love. In spite of the way some of us were raised as children, really, you don't have to earn love. You see, you don't have to earn the right to breathe. You have the right and to breathe freely and fully because you exist. And you have the right to be loved because you exist. That's all you have to do. We are lovable because we exist. And we have to know that and make it true for ourselves. Speaking of thoughts, I talk a lot about affirmations. And we must remember that every thought we think and every word we speak is an affirmation. And far too often, they are negative. And we're not aware that the words and the thoughts were, are, these words and thoughts are shaping our future and our experiences. But when we talk about doing affirmations, 
We're talking about creating positive statements to create something wonderful and new in your life or to eliminate something for your life. So doing affirmations is one of the best ways to be kind to your mind because you create definite positive statements that build you up instead of beat you up. See, if you can think of your thoughts as building you up rather than beating you up, and so many of us, I know I certainly did, had a habit of beating myself up with my own thoughts. Thinking well of yourself is an act of kindness that pays enormous dividends, enormous dividends. You can also learn the difference between responsibility and blame. Don't get into this, oh, I'm having this negative experience, therefore I must be a bad person routine. That's a terrible thing to do. Responsibility is making a conscious choice of how you will respond to a, a situation or to an idea. What sort of thoughts will you choose? You have an experience, okay, how can you, how can you learn from this experience? Or what can you learn from this experience? You know, Dr. Bernie Siegel says in his new book, uh, Peace, Love, and Healing, that people who have so-called terminal illnesses and defy the statistical odds against them all share something. They have an acceptance of responsibility for decisions affecting their lives. They don't blame themselves, but they do accept responsibility. See, blame is making yourself wrong for having certain thoughts or for having certain experiences. But blame creates guilt, and guilt always seeks punishment, and punishment creates pain. So being kind to yourself means stopping all blame, all guilt, all punishment, and all pain. Respond to yourself and to life in a loving way. Now, another kindness you can give to yourself is to relax. Just relax. Relaxation is essential. It's absolutely essential for the healing process. It's really hard to allow the healing energies to flow within us if we're tense and frightened. It's like we shut off the energy. And it only takes a minute or two, a few times a day, to allow the body to let go and relax. See, at any moment, you can close your eyes and take two or three deep breaths and just release whatever tension you're carrying. Let's do that now for a moment. Just let's close our eyes and take a deep breath and just exhale and let go. Just let go. And let's do that again. Take another breath and just release all fear, any tension. And once more, take a deep breath. And as you exhale, just let yourself be centered. And you might even say to yourself silently, I love you, all is well. And then just notice how much easier your body is for the moment. That didn't take two minutes. And if you would do that several times a day, it sort of says to the body, it's okay, you don't have to go through life tense and frightened. You can be relaxed and still handle whatever you need to handle. Another kindness to yourself is to meditate. You know, as a society, we've made meditation into something mysterious and difficult to achieve. And yet meditation is one of the oldest and simplest processes there are that we can do. All we have to do is to sit or even lie quietly, close our eyes, take a few deep breaths, and our body again will automatically relax. We don't have to force it, it just happens. And we can repeat words like love, or peace, or healing, or anything that's meaningful to us. We could even say, I love myself, or I forgive and I am forgiven, or I'm willing to learn. And then just sit there quietly, and your answers may come immediately, or in a day or two, or whenever. The thing I do most of the time is just say, what is it I need to know? And then I just wait. And what I need to know is revealed to me. 
You know, you don't have to be rushed. Just allow things to happen. Remember, it's the nature of your mind to think. You're never going to stop your mind to, from thinking. Some people think that if they meditate, they have to stop their mind from thinking. But you can slow down those dashing thoughts. You just allow them to flow through. And you might, if you're meditating, just notice and sort of say, oh, that's a fear thought. Or, there goes anger. Well, that's a disaster. <laughs> that's an abandonment thought. You see, if you don't give them importance, then they pass through like a soft cloud on a summer day. And you just watch them go. You cannot meditate incorrectly. Any way you first attempt it is going to be right for you. If you begin anywhere and you allow it to become a habit. You see, we all have tremendous wisdom within us. Inside of us, I believe, are all the answers to all the questions we're ever going to ask. And unfortunately, most of the time, we're so busy running around creating the soap opera and drama that we call our lives that we forget to quiet down long enough to listen to us. Meditation creates the space where we can quiet down and listen to our inner selves. And you'll never have any idea how wise you are until you quiet down and listen. You can take care of yourself. You do have the answers for yourself. Become connected with yourself through sitting quietly, through meditation. You know, you can think of meditation as focusing on your inner voice. It's like you're, you're focusing and listening. Visualizations are also very important. You, you create a clear mental picture or an image that enhances your positive affirmations. When I had cancer, I used to visualize cool, clear water flowing through my body and washing out the diseased cells and my body responding and becoming very strong and healthy. Now, I know some people like to use uh, visualizations of fighting their cells. They like to fight the diseased cells. I personally don't feel good about creating a war in my body. And I think it's better to use an image that dissolves, like the sun could melt, or a magician could transform, or you could use some form of love to make the positive change. But when you're using visualizations, make them positive, some picture that works for you. And everyone can visualize, everyone. You're describing your home, having a sexual fantasy. You know, people who, who, talk, who think that there's no connection between mind and body have obviously never had a sexual fantasy. Isn't it amazing what the mind can do? <laughs> OK, so let's use these visualizations in a positive way to really enhance what you're doing. Just like you know, you've used negative visualizations to make a bad situation worse, you can use a positive visualization to make it better. OK, number five, praise yourself. Please praise yourself. Criticism breaks down the inner spirit, and praise builds it up. So praise yourself as much as you can. Tell yourself how well you're doing with every little thing. Many of us refuse to put any effort into creating a good life for ourselves because we feel we don't deserve it. Our feeling of not being deserving could come from people telling us we didn't, but it could also come from something as simple as early toilet training or being refused an ice cream cone when we were young. Uh, deserving has nothing to do with having good. It's our unwillingness to accept good in our lives. Allow yourself to accept good whether you think you deserve it or not. And you know, when you think about deserving, there's a few questions I'd like to ask you about this to help you deserve the good that's in the universe. Uh, what, do you f what is it you feel you deserve? What do you feel you deserve? Do you deserve love and joy and all good? Or do you feel deep down that you deserve nothing? Why? Where did that message come from? And are you willing to let it go? What are you willing to put in its place? What different message would you put there? 
Because remember, these negative messages, something that says you don't deserve or you're not worthy, that's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. What is it you want that you're not now having? Think about that and be clear and specific about what you want and what you deserve. What were the laws about deserving in your home? What did they tell you you don't deserve? Did they tell you you deserve a good smack? Is that the message you got as a child? Did your parents feel that they deserved, that they deserved good things? Do you always have to earn in order to deserve? And were things taken away as a child when you did something wrong? Now, do you really feel you deserve? Do you feel good enough, smart enough, tall enough, pretty enough, bright enough, whatever? What belief is in the way of your deserving? Do you believe you're not good enough? There's not enough money. I'll never amount to anything. I'm not ready yet. What are the beliefs that are in the way of you really deserving? And then the last question about deserving is, what do you have to live for? What do you have to live for? What is the purpose of your life? And what meaning have you created? You know, you're here for a reason. You didn't come just to get a new car every so many years. You really came for a purpose. And what is your purpose? What are you willing to do to experience the good you really deserve? Are you willing to do affirmations? Are you willing to do visualizations? Are you willing to do treatments? Are you willing to forgive people? Are you willing to do regular relaxation and meditation? How much mental effort are you willing to give in order to change your life? Questions to ask yourself. All right, number six on loving yourself is support yourself. Find ways to support yourself. Reach out to friends and allow them to help you. It really is being strong to ask for help when you need it, instead of trying to do it all yourself and then being angry at yourself because you can't make it. And there's so many ways. You know, friends can help you. There are support groups everywhere. We now seem to have 12-step programs for almost every problem there is. I'm sure you have them here. We certainly have them in Los Angeles. There are lists of all the things that they do. Uh, in some areas, you find healing circles, and lots of the churches have support groups. And if you can't find you want what you want, you could even start your own. Start your own support group. All you need is a teddy bear and some good, encouraging thoughts. <laughs> uh, how do you start a support group? You know, some people think that's so scary. They'd like to have them, but they don't want to, they don't know what to do about it. Well, you know, you can just gather two or three friends that have the same issues that you have and follow a few guidelines. If you do it with love in your heart, your little group will grow. It's amazing. People will be attracted like a magnet. And don't worry if, if you have a little group and it starts to grow. Don't worry about where you're going to meet because the universe will always find a space. Okay. Number seven on loving yourself. Be loving to your negatives. Be loving to your negatives. You created every single negative pattern, every negative habit, everything you have in your life to fulfill a need. And they worked. See, everybody's made negative choices in the past. We all have. However, nobody is stuck with them. The good news is that you always have choice. You can choose again. And you can always choose to let go of the old pattern, and you can choose a different, a more supportive and nourishing thought. Letting go of the old negative pattern with love allows you to move into the new positive patterns with ease. It just it makes it so much easier. But punishing yourself, you know, with thoughts like, I hate my job, I hate this illness, or I hate this relationship, or whatever, keeps you tied to what you hate, and it doesn't allow anything new and different to come into your life. See, if you run around saying, I hate my job, then the universe gets this message, oh, hates job. So if you get a new job, I guarantee you, 
you'll hate your job very shortly because that's the message that you've put out. You want to release with love. Release whatever's in your life that you're not happy with now with love and allow then the new stuff to come in. It really does. When you love yourself and you find yourself in the midst of a negative situation, you can say something to yourself like, I'm willing to release the pattern in my consciousness that contributed to this condition. And then uh, you can say a positive affirmation, you know, like I really deserve only good in my life. I allow the healing powers and the healing energies of the universe to flow through me, really changing my life for the better. Our thoughts and our words are very powerful. And remember, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what situ negative situation you have right now, you are never wrong. You're never wrong. You're always doing the best you can until you find a better way to handle situations. I love what Dr. John Harrison says in his book, Love Your Disease. He says, it's essential that the patient is congratulated on having worked out a way to get their needs met in as safe a way as possible for them. The patient is never condemned for having multiple operations or illnesses. In fact, quite the opposite, they are congratulated. We have to understand that whatever we have in our life, we have contributed to it because it's our way of handling situations. And to be angry at ourselves because such and such is going on doesn't make any changes. It doesn't make positive changes. What we have to do is fulfill those needs in a much more positive way. And that's what we want to concentrate on. Okay, humor is another powerful releasing tool when it comes to holding on to negatives too long. Sometimes we work so hard on ourselves that we forget to lighten up. You know, laughter's healing. Norman Cousins, I mean, healed himself of illness by watching the Three Stooges films and laughing himself into wellness. I mean, he wrote a whole book on it. Okay, number eight on how to love yourself. Take care of your body. It's the house you live in. When you're born, you move into this house. And when you leave the planet, you move out of it. So love the house that you live in and take care of it. You can find exercise that you enjoy, something that's fun to do. And then watch what you put into your body. Drug abuse is so prevalent on the planet. And it's become one of the most popular methods of escape. You know, and it, if you're into drugs, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means that you haven't found a more positive way of fulfilling your needs. You know, drugs beckon to us. and They say, come and play with me and I will give you a good time. And it's true. For a little bit, they do. You feel wonderful. But the, what happens is that they alter our reality. And what isn't evident at first is the terrible price that we have to pay. I mean, after taking them for a while, the whole health deteriorates rapidly, and you feel terrible all the time. And in addition, you have a negative addiction. And then, you know, people do all sorts of things with that. Drugs lower our immune systems to very dangerous levels. And on one level, you think, well, why would we even consider taking them? Peer pressure may get us to try drugs once. But continued use is another story. You know, I've yet to meet anyone who really loves themselves, who's hooked on drugs. We take drugs to escape ourselves and our feelings. And it all begins, again, with not loving ourselves and not appreciating who we are. We take those childhood feelings of not being good enough, and then we try to wipe them out. And this method never works for the drugs or the alcohol or whatever we're using, that wears off and then we feel worse than we ever did. And then we usually have a load of guilt too. So we want to know that it's safe for us to feel our feelings. That's okay. Part of loving ourselves is feeling our feelings and acknowledging them. You know, they pass through, they don't stay. Food, we use food. Food really is a fuel for our bodies to help create new cells and to give us good energy. And even though some of us may know the basics of good nutrition, we still often use diet and food to punish ourselves. It's another way. We stuff ourselves or stuff our feelings. 
we create obesity, we create health crises in our lives. We become a nation of junk food addicts, unfortunately. It's like we've allowed the big food processors and their advertising to influence our eating habits. And doctors, of course, are not even taught about nutrition. If a doctor wants to learn about nutrition, it's almost like an extracurriculum subject they have to take. So they're not going to know a lot about nutrition. Most medicine of the moment is concentrated on surgery and drugs. So if we really want to learn about nutrition, it's something that we have to take in our own hands. It's an act of loving ourselves to begin to be aware of what we put in our mouth and how we feel. You know, if you eat lunch and an hour later you start going to sleep, you might ask yourself, what did I eat? Maybe there's something that isn't good for my body at this point in time and space. So start noticing what gives you good energy and what doesn't, what tears you down. So we can either do that by trial and error ourselves, or you can find a good nutritionist to go to who knows some of these answers and can really help. And then there are lots of other good alternative therapies that we can explore if, to see if they're right for us. Because remember, every body is different from every other body. I mean, you can look around and see that. So one, no one thing is going to be good for everybody. But, you know, acupuncture is a favorite of mine. There's herbology, there's homeopathy, there's the Bach flower remedies, there's all sorts of body work and massage, there's aromatherapy, there's sound therapy, that's an area that I'm now beginning to explore, how sound waves can accelerate learning and healing. You know, we're in a time right now where the new technologies that we're learning are beginning to combine with ancient healing methods. And I see the possibilities as absolutely enormously, just endless, endless. I think between now and the end of the century, we're going to learn so much. So taking good care of our bodies is an act of loving ourselves. And then there is mirror work mirror work, one that I love so much. I have seen so many people change their lives by merely looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. I really, really love you. You know, at first it may seem untrue or even weird, and it can bring up sadness or anger or fear. But if we continue to do this simple affirmation every time we're in front of a mirror, our inner energy begins to shift letting go of destructive thoughts and behaviors and accepting ourselves as naturally lovable becomes so much easier. And there are several ways you can practice mirror work. I like first thing in the morning just looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. What can I do for you today to make you happy? How can I make you happy today? Do you ever ask yourself that? Especially first thing in the morning? <laughs> and then listen, listen to what you hear and start following through. You may not get any messages to begin with because you may be so used to beating yourself up that you, you don't know how to respond to a kind, loving thought. <laughs> but listen and follow through and begin to learn to trust yourself. If something unpleasant happens, immediately run to the mirror and say, I love you. I love you anyway. Because you want to realize that events come and go but the love that you have for yourself is constant, and it's the most important thing in your life. Not the experience of the moment, but the fact that you love yourself. If something wonderful happens, run to the mirror and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Acknowledge yourself for having created that wonderful thing. You can do forgiveness work in the mirror. Look into your own eyes and say, I forgive you. I forgive you for holding on to old patterns for too long. I forgive you for not loving yourself. I forgive you for whatever. You know, we're so hard on ourselves. We're so judgmental and so critical. We beat ourselves up for every little mistake, no matter how small. Every one of us can use forgiveness on a daily basis. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I say, I am forgiven. I forgive you and I am forgiven. I forgive and I am forgiven. Know that it works both ways. You can talk to other people in the mirror. Tell people things in the mirror you'd be afraid to say in person. 
You know, you can clean up old issues. You can forgive them. You can ask for love and approval. It's a wonderful way to talk to your parents or a, a, you know, part of a relationship. Talk to your doctor in the mirror. Talk to your boss in the mirror. You can say all sorts of things that you'd be afraid to say otherwise. But I think the last thing you always want to say when you do any mirror work is that what you really want is their love and approval. Because that's what we all want. We all want love and approval from wherever we are so that everybody gives that to us. And the more we give it, the more we're going to get it. See, affirmations in the mirror are powerful because the mirror always tells us the truth. If you look in the mirror and you immediately hear negative stuff, then that's like almost a, a gift, a treat. Because if you look in the mirror and you say, I love you, and you hear this, you know, who are you kidding? <laughs> Can't be true. Then you know all you know is that that is just an old negative thought that's passing through. You know, and what I like to say lots of times is, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> when you acknowledge that the negative thought is there, don't give it a lot of importance. Or if you have a negative message coming through, turn it around into a positive affirmation. Just let it go. And at least once a day, you know, look in your eyes and say, I love you. I really, really love you. I love you. And as for loving yourself, you know, do it now. Don't wait till you get well or you lose the weight or you get the new job or the newer relationship. Do it now and do the best you can. You see, if you're dissatisfied with yourself now and you think, oh, well, I will love myself when I get the new job or I lose the weight or I have a new relationship. Believe me, you'll lose the weight, you'll get the new job, you'll have the new relationship and you'll still be dissatisfied with yourself. Because the dissatisfaction with yourself is a habit pattern. If you can be satisfied with yourself now, if you can love and approve of yourself now, then when the good comes into your life, when the new things come in, you'll really be able to enjoy it. You'll really have a wonderful time. So don't wait. The most important thing is just be willing. Just be willing. I'm ready now to love myself. I'm ready to let my life change. And I'm willing. You may not know how to. It may seem sort of scary practicing all these things. If that's too much, then just start with, I'm willing to learn to love myself. I'm willing to learn to love myself. And believe me, the universe will hear you because you're, and God always says yes, your subconscious mind always says yes, that you'll start to get a positive response. And once you've learned to love and accept yourself exactly as you are, then you can begin to learn to love and accept other people as they are. See, we can't change other people. If we just, you know, that I think is another way of learning to love yourself, is stop trying to change other people. Leave them alone. I mean, all that energy that we spend into trying to make other people different. If we used half of that energy, we could make ourselves different. And when we're different, our whole life will change. You can't learn things for another person. Everybody has to learn their own lessons. But you can learn for yourself. You can learn for yourself. And you want to love yourself enough so that you're not brought down by self-destructive people or people that are negative. You know, they have a right to what they think and what they want to do for themselves. But you don't want to put yourself in such a position. And if you're in a position where you're with a really negative person that doesn't want to change, then you need to love yourself enough to move out of that. You know, far too often we stay in a negative relationship for so long, you might even be taking abuse in a relationship. We'll allow ourselves to be put down. And when we do that, we're always saying, really, well, I'm not worth loving, so I have to stay here and accept this behavior because I know nobody else would want me. You know, that's a very negative feeling to have about yourself. But, you know, where is that concept? That concept isn't out there. That concept can only be inside of us. 
And when we change the negative belief we have about ourselves, then we find that we're treated differently. I know that I sound very simplistic and I repeat the same thing over and over again, but I truly do believe that the quickest way to change any problem in our life is to love who we are. Because it's amazing how the vibrations that we send out then are different and the way people react to us are also different. We can't be healed and whole unless we really love who we are. So ask yourself, are you willing to love yourself? Are you willing? When we really love ourselves, we cannot hurt ourselves and we cannot hurt another person. And that, to me, is the answer to inner peace and to world peace. Unconditional love is the goal that I think we're all here for. But it begins with self-acceptance and with self-love. You know, you've come to this planet for a purpose. You've come to fulfill yourself. And you've come to express love on the deepest level. And when you leave the planet, the only thing you're going to take with you is your capacity to love. That's it. You don't take your relationship. You don't take your automobile or your bank account or your job. You take your capacity to love. So how can you love yourself more? And how can you give more love to the planet, to the world? Over a period of time, using the principles and ideas that I've learned, I've created for myself a set of beliefs. These are what I call my basic beliefs and my beliefs, and they work very well for me. They're simple, and yet they seem to cover all the areas of my life, and I just want to share them with you. First of all, I believe that I am always safe. Wherever I go, wherever I am, I am always safe. This is one of my beliefs. The universe takes care of me, and I'm led and guided every moment. I also know that everything I need to know is revealed to me. I don't have to struggle. Knowledge comes to me, whatever I need to know. I hear what I need to hear. And if I'm supposed to know something, it's revealed to me. I don't have to read newspapers. I don't have to listen to the news on television or on the radio. I don't have to fill myself with that garbage. If I'm meant to know something, it will come to me. I always know. I also know that everything I need comes to me in the perfect time-space sequence. And again, I release the struggle of trying to make things happen. I speak my word for what I believe, and then I let it go. I've placed my order in what I like to think of as the cosmic kitchen. <laughs> and the big chefs are working on it. <laughs> well, you know, it's true. When you, when you do your affirmations and things, we often do them, and then we try to struggle to make them happen. But, you know, if you go to a restaurant, and the waiter or the waitress takes your order and goes off to the kitchen. You don't run after them into the kitchen to see what's happening. You assume that it's being taken care of. And you can do the same thing, you know. You do an affirmation for something and you want and you say, okay, that's they're taken care of. Every time you think of it, you know it's taken care of it. So I deal with what's in front of me. And I know that what is, what is right for me will come to me in the perfect time-space sequence. And so much good comes into my life. Some of it I ask for, and some of it, uh, and much of it I, don't, I haven't even thought of. When you love yourself, it's amazing what comes into your life. OK, I also believe that life is a joy and filled with love. And as I choose to believe this, it becomes true for me. I awaken in the morning with joy in my heart, and I find it almost everywhere I turn. See, the heart's job is to lovingly pump joy throughout our bodies. And all we have to do is get our negative thoughts out of the way and allow this to happen. What we give out comes back to us. So what you're believing is going to come back to you as truth. Okay, I also believe I am loving and I am loved. And I operate from the loving space of the heart as much as I can. Now, this is a lesson for all of us, and we're not there all the time. Every time I find myself off track, I try to bring myself back. Because by giving out love, of course, it comes back to me multiplied. And there's so much love in my life these days. It's just incredible. I, I could never have imagined it. Never. 
Okay, I also know that I prosper wherever I turn. See, I've never gone for the money. I've always asked myself, how can I help? And I know that the quickest way to increase our income is the mental work that we do. The beliefs we choose to accept either attract or repel money and other forms of prosperity. My income is constantly increasing is another affirmation I've chosen to accept and believe. My income is constantly increasing, because that means wherever you start, it can always grow. So I prosper wherever I turn, and my income is constantly increasing. I also know and believe that I am willing to grow and to change. See, I don't believe that I know everything. I don't think I'm on some plateau, and I know it all. I know that there's so much more to learn. I'm well aware of that. And I'm open and receptive to new ideas and to new knowledge and to new insight. And I allow them to come in. And when I find something new, I'm willing to shift what's inside of me. And I do that periodically. I'm so different than I was 20 years ago. My goodness. I'm willing to look at myself. See, I know that I can become more of who I am. I don't believe that we become better people, because that always implies that you're not good enough but I think we can become more of who we are. See, growing and changing is wonderful. I'm willing to let go of whatever doesn't work for me anymore. And I know that growing and changing are just aspects of life. And the other thing I know for myself is that all is well in my world. See, if I know that all is well in my world, then it doesn't much matter which direction my life turns in, because it'll always be good. So I trust life to take me where I'm supposed to go, and that everything will always be for my highest good. And these beliefs work for me. Now, what kind of beliefs would you like to live by? See, create a set of beliefs that you would like to live by, and then start affirming them and know that they're true for you. They'll help you carry, carry you where you want to go. That is part of loving yourself, creating a set of guidelines that work for you. So you want to love yourself, you want to love other people, you want to release your negative patterns and negative thoughts. Practice unconditional love as much as you possibly can, because it'll change your own life enormously. Do everything you can to be happy and to bring joy into your life. Mm -hmm.